Our last lesson in Chapter 7 is 7.6, Solving Exponential and Logarithmic Equations. Please make sure to have your calculator handy as we go through solving these types of equations and work with application. We're going to start with just kind of the breakdown of process. You're either going to have an exponential equation or you're going to have a logarithmic equation. If you have an exponential equation, the first thing you want to do is isolate the base to one side. So remember, the base is anything that the exponent is attached to. And we're going to do a lot of converting forms as we solve in each of these types of processes. If you have exponential, the second thing you want to do is convert to logarithmic by doing the looping method. When we solve, we're likely going to use the change of base formula as our process. That's why you want to have your calculator ready. So let's start with these three examples down below, and then we'll talk about logarithmic. It says solve each equation, round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so in step, or in question one, four to the x power equals 11. We're asked to solve this, and we wouldn't be able to use our power chart because four and 11 wouldn't have any connections on the power chart. So step one, isolate your base. The base is four, so it's already isolated. That's done for us. Then it says convert to logarithmic. In step two, if we're converting to logarithmic, we literally start by writing log as our prefix. So remember, when we convert, the base of the exponential problem is the base of our logarithm. And then we do that looping. What are we taking the logarithm of? We're taking the logarithm of 11. And what will it equal when we're done? It will equal x. So notice our variables by itself, which means we need to evaluate log base 4 of 11. Remembering the change of base formula that's written up above, if we have a base that's not calculator friendly, we just rewrite the form as log of 11, which would default that to base 10, divided by log 4. That's that change of base rule that allows us to use our calculator. But remember, make sure that you don't cancel out the LOG like terms because they look the same. We have to type it into our calculator, log 11, and then put a parenthesis divided by log four, and then put that parenthesis, press enter. So try that now, and you should get approximately 1.73 when rounded to the nearest hundredth. All right, let's try the next one. Six to the two x power plus seven equals 19. Step one, isolate the base. Now that this looks kind of weird because the exponent has a two in front of it, but the base is six, so that's what we want to isolate. To move the 7 over, we'll just subtract it, like so. That gives us 6 to the 2x power equals 19 minus 7, which is 12. Be careful here. The 6 and the 12, they're not power chart friendly. Even though 6 goes into 12 twice, we can't raise 6 to an integer power to get 12. So we do have to do that looping for that next step, convert to logarithmic. Start with the LOG prefix. Our base is 6, so our little sub base is 6. And then we take the logarithm of 12. And now this time it's going to equal 2x. Now we have to be careful here. If we use our change of base rule, this would give us log of 12 divided by log 6. And that equals 2x. We want to get x by itself first before we plug anything into our calculator. That way you're only rounding one time. So to get x by itself, we actually now have to divide by two. And so that's gonna put a big fraction bar here. Make sure when you type this in, when you type log 12, that that goes in parentheses, divided by log six in parentheses, and then do divided by two. See if you can enter all of that in at once. When you do, you should get approximately x equals approximately 0 0.69. If you didn't get it, you're welcome to try log 12 divided by log 6, press enter, and then without rounding that, divide by 2, and you should get the same result I did. All right, one more over here on the right. One third e to the x equals 2. Now we have to be careful on this one. Our base is the only thing that the exponent is attached to, and in this case, it's e. So we have to get that part by itself. Quickest way to get rid of a fraction is to multiply it by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 3rd is just 3 over 1, so I'm just going to put times 3, which is weird because there's already a 3 there. 
I know, poor planning. And I would have times three on the other side. So this three cancels out with the one third and we isolate e to the x. On the right, two times three is six. Step two, convert to logarithmic, but we have to watch out here. Our base is e, so remember that's that ln rule, so that's ln, not log. When we convert to logarithmic then, we'll do ln, and I like to do a little loopy l instead of a like a just as lowercase l because that kind of looks like i n. So I do the loopy l just know so we know it's l n. But whatever, choice is yours. And remember, anything with base e, we don't actually write it right here because l n is only base e. That means we can go right to the looping step. What are we taking the l n of? Just six. And what will it equal when we're done? Our exponent, which is x. So x is by itself. If you type ln of 6 on your calculator, you should get approximately 1.79. And that's rounded to the nearest hundredth. Before we flip over to the next page, let's go back up to that logarithmic solving section up at the top. In a logarithmic equation, you know there's going to be an log or an ln in that statement. So the first thing you want to do is isolate the logarithm term. So a logarithm term, remember, is the log or the ln and the variable that will be next to it. And then we'll convert to exponential, and we'll do that by looping again. And we'll solve either by using our calculator or using our power chart, and then we have to check for extraneous solutions. What that means for logarithms is that we can't take an log or ln of a negative number. If you have ln of like negative 10 or log of negative 14, that means it's an invalid solution for x. x can technically be negative, but when we plug it back in to check it, the ln can't be negative. So let's see what happens on the next page. We're going to see a variety of logarithmic equations. 4 and 5 are a little bit different than 6, 7, and 8. So the unique thing on 4 and 5 is if you have a logarithmic term on the left, and a logarithmic term on the right, and they're both the same base, essentially what we can do is eliminate that portion of the equation. So the left side would only be equal to the right side if 5x plus 9 is equal to 6x. That seems reasonable. Now, to get x by itself, if you simply move 5x to the other side, we get x equals 9. That was pretty simple to get x by itself. When we check it, if I type it in at the very beginning for x on the left side and the right side, we would have log base 5 of 5 times 5 plus 9. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. Oh, not 5 times 5. Wow, never mind. Let's try that again. <laughs> 5 times 9 plus 9. I knew that didn't look quite right. So 5 times 9 is 45 plus 9 is 54. We have log base 5 of 54. That's a positive value, so let's see what happens on the right side. If we plug it in for x here, log base 5 of 6 times 9, well, that's also 54. So that's a really quick way to tell that that problem checks out, and x equals 9 is our solution. But watch what happens over here on the next problem. If we have log base 7 of 2x minus 7, and log base 7 of 3x minus 9, again, the logarithms match. And if there's just one on each side, this would only be true if 2x minus 7 equals 3x minus 9. Again, essentially, we can cancel out the logarithm part if there's one on each side. Now to get x by itself, I have to do a couple of things. I've got to move the 2x over to the other side. I'm also going to move the 9, like so. 2x's cancel, negative 7 plus 9 is 2, and on the right, the 9's cancel, 3x minus 2x is x. Seems simple enough, but watch what happens when we check here. If I type in log base 7 of 2 times 2 minus 7, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So we have log base 7 of a negative number. We can't have a negative number for a logarithm because we can't raise 7 to a power to get negative 3. 
So even though it equals negative 3 on the other side, because it's a negative, that would be invalid for the equation. Therefore, this one has no solution. So this is extraneous. And since that was our only choice, this equation, like I just said, has no solution. So if you see a logarithm on each side, and there's just one, we can simplify using these rules. Down below, the things changed, or processes changed just a little bit. All right, question six. Log base four of x equals negative one. So step one, when we have a logarithmic equation, that's just one logarithm, is isolate the logarithmic term. We actually have that here. It's already all by itself. Step two, convert to exponential, which means we need a base and an exponent. Well, the base of the logarithm is 4, and that means the base for our exponential function is 4. To get its exponent, we loop it to the other side, 4 to the negative 1 power. And what will that equal when we're done? Pretty easily, it equals x. 4 to the negative 1 power is the same as 1 over 4 to the positive 1 power, so x equals 1 fourth. Now we plug that in, log base 4 of 1 fourth, you can take the logarithm of a negative number. This one checks. That would be a true statement. Now, the next one's kind of tricky because it says negative x in the equation. So that means if we get a negative answer, it would actually work out. 4 ln negative x minus 3 equals 21. Yikes. There's a lot going on here. We first have to identify what is the logarithmic term. Well, the logarithmic term has to have the ln and then something after it. That's what we want to get by itself in step one. There's a 4 out in front if you see that, and there's a plus 3. So I'm going to start by moving the 3 over with using subtraction. That gives us 4 times ln of negative x equals 21 minus 3, which is 18. And then to get ln negative x by itself, we have to divide by 4. So now we have ln negative x equals 18 over 4, or 4.5. You can use a decimal as long as it's exact. If we start to round things now, then we get rounded answers that are a little bit off later. But 4.5 is exact, so let's go with it. Once the ln is isolated, we're going to need to convert to exponential. Anytime we use ln, we know that the base is automatically e. So I'm going to start with e. We're going to raise it to the 4.5 power, and it's actually going to equal negative x. Well, we don't, where we don't want to plug anything in until we get x completely by itself. So that means I'm just going to divide by negative 1. Go ahead and type in e to the 4.5 power, press enter, and then leave that on your screen and just type out divide by negative 1. Or if you recognize if you divide by negative, it just makes your answer negative. To the nearest hundredth, we're going to get e equals approximately or at e equals, sorry, x equals approximately negative 90.02. Please make sure to type that in to get that result. All right, off to the last one. The last one is unique because it doesn't quite fit the rule like 4 and 5 did. Notice there are just two logarithms, but they're on the same side, and there's another term on the right. So we can't just cross the logarithms off for this kind of problem. We can, however, recognize that, oh yeah, our properties of logarithms apply. If you have addition, you can condense these two terms down to 1 by multiplying the x and the x minus 2. So I'm just going to write condense here, and that's what we did in lesson 7.5. We would have log base 2 of x times x minus 2 equals 3. That's just the product property in condensing form. So once we have one logarithmic term, I'm going to convert it to exponential. My base is 2. I'm going to raise it to the third power. And that's going to equal x times x minus 2. Now, watch what happens in this row. Big star. Watch what happens from here to here. 2 to the third power on the left equals 8. Fair enough. But on the right-hand side, everybody, guess what we have to do? We have to distribute the x in, and we end up with x squared. Oh, boy. x squared minus 2x. This is quadratic, 
And anytime we have a quadratic function, you have to set it equal to zero and factor. So that's not going to go away anytime soon. Let's move that 8 over, and that'll be our constant. Let's hope this is factorable. Can we think of two numbers that multiply to equal negative 8, but also add to get negative 2 in the middle? Hopefully you recognize that we could do negative 4 and positive 2. That would give us x minus 4 and x plus 2. But when we set that equal to 0, if x minus 4 equals 0, we have to add 4 to move it over. One of our choices then for our solution is x equals positive 4. The other one, if we set x plus 2 equal to 0, we have to subtract that one, and we get x equals negative 2. When we do our check, I'll start with 4. Log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 4 minus 2 equals 3. Well, this is positive, so that one's okay. 4 minus 2 is 2, and that's also positive. So x equals 4 checks. That's a valid solution. But watch what happens when we plug in to negative 2. If I check this one, we right out of the gate get log base 2 of negative 2. That right there means this is going to be an extraneous solution. We can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So that means negative 2 is extraneous. So x equals 4 is the only valid solution. And now it's time for some application. A, rat or a satellite has a radioisotope power supply. The power output formula in watts is given below where T is the time in days since the power supply was in service. So here's our formula. P equals 50 times E to the negative T over 250 power. How much power will there be at the end of one year? Well, if we're looking for T and it says one year, that's going to be 365 days because t time is labeled in days. Plug that into your formula. P equals... 50e to the negative 365 over 250 power. You should be able to type in 50 and then get e to show up on your screen. And then for the exponent, put negative 365 divided by 250, but make sure you put that in parentheses. The parentheses are going to be crucial for this part. When you type this in, we're going to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. So try it, and we should get a power supply of approximately 11.61. We need to label our answer. So up in the formula, it said the power output formula was labeled in watts. That means you'll have 11.61 watts left over after one year. All right, we're going to work backwards for B and C. How long will it take the power supply to be cut in half? So if we're going to cut it in half, we have to figure out, well, how much did we have to start with? If you look at this formula, remember the coefficient out in front is always the original amount. So if we started with 50 watts and we want to know how long will it take to be cut in half, that means P would equal 25 watts because that's half of 50. So now we're going to have to work backwards. If we plug in 25 on the left equals 50 times e to the negative t over 250 power on the right. This is an example of an exponential equation because we have an exponent with e. I'm just going to try to make that a zero right there. The first thing you want to do is isolate your base. And in this problem, e is the base. Let's move 50 over simply by dividing it out. Okay. There are 120, or, well, 25 divided by 50 is 1 half. And then we have e to the negative t over 250 power on the right. That's step one, isolating your base. Step two, we're going to convert to logarithmic. So anytime we have base e, we know our logarithm has to be that ln. We're not going to use log. To convert then to logarithmic form, I'm going to start with ln. And remember, base e, we don't write that there because it's always base e. So we just stick with ln but we loop it to figure out the rest of the problem. What are we taking the ln of 
it's going to be one half. So I'm going to put that in parentheses, ln one half. And what does it equal? Oh boy, it equals that crazy exponent on the right, negative t over 250. I don't want to type anything in until I get the variable by itself. If it's negative t over 250, what I want to do to get t by itself is multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over 250, which would be just negative 250. And if I do that on the left, we have to do that on the right, or right and left, I guess. There we go. If I plug it, or if I multiply by negative 250, the 250s cancel because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, and the two negatives make a positive. So let's see if you can type this in. Negative 250, and then press ln, 1 divided by 2, close that parenthesis, and press enter. We're going to round this to the nearest hundredth. I get t is approximately 173.29, and our label for time is in days. So it's working backwards with that power formula. We're going to skip this one for now so we can look at the last two problems on the next page. You plant a sunflower seedling in your garden. The seedling's height h in centimeters after t weeks can be modeled by the function below. h of t equals 256 divided by 1 plus 13e to the negative 0.65t power. Find the time it takes this, oh, whoa, come back to me, sorry. <laughs> Find the time it takes the sunflower seedling to reach a height of 200 centimeters. So that means h of t is 200. Not just the letter h and not just t, h of t. We're going to substitute that in on the left hand side. Okay, so 200 equals 256 over 1 plus 13 e to the negative 0.65t. Wow, that's quite a formula. This is exponential because we have an exponent with e. But first, we need to figure out how to get that by itself. Because there's a lot happening here. The key thing is, is we can't have it in the denominator, so we have to get rid of the denominator first. My first step then is I'm going to actually multiply 1 plus 13 e to the negative point, there's 0 0.65 t power on the left. And I'm also going to try to squeeze that in over here, excuse me, I'm on the right-hand side, I keep saying that. I'm going to try to squeeze that in over here on the left-hand side as well. 1 plus 13 e to the negative 0 0.65 t power. And what that allows us to do, everybody, is cancel out the entire denominator with that big parenthesis. But on the left-hand side, watch what we have to do. If it's 1 plus 13, we can't add those together, but we can distribute the 200 to both terms, because like this is a term and this big part is a term. So 200 times the 1 is 200, and 200 times 13 is 2,600. That's everything we have on that left-hand side. And on the right, we just have 256. This now kind of looks a little bit more like an exponential function we've worked with before. But we still need to isolate our base. And for this problem, the base is right here. Let's think about ways to get that by itself. Let's first move the 200 over just by subtracting. Start moving things around. That cancels out. We get 2600 e to the negative 0.65 t power. And on the right, we just have 56. The next thing to do to get e by itself, that base, is we'll divide by 2600. We'll do the same thing on the right. Okay? From here, that cancels out, and that gives us e to the negative 0.65 t. And I'm just going to even leave the 56 over 2600 right now because we have to loop it anyway. So let's see what that looks like. If our base is e and we're going to convert to exponential, or if our base is e, well, sorry, if our base is e and we're going to convert it to logarithmic, then we're going to start with ln and not log. So what are we taking the ln of? That big fraction, 56 over 2600. 
And what will it equal when we're done? The exponent, which was negative 0.65t. To get t by itself, we have to divide. We know how much fun these application problems are. and we're dividing that whole answer. And now we're finally allowed to type all this in at once. Be careful for your parentheses. And then make sure to divide by that negative 0.65 when you're done. For this one, I think I only rounded it to the nearest tenth, and I'm not quite sure why. Did it say I needed to in the directions? Didn't really say. But I, yeah, I, for whatever reason, I only rounded this one to the nearest tenth. So if you type all of this in, you should get approximately 5.9 weeks. And there's your application problem about sunflowers. I added this last problem because I'm hopeful that it looks familiar to some of you. It says biology, well actually all of you, but we'll see. Biologists have found that an alligator's length L in inches and weight in pounds are related by the function L equals 27.1 LNW minus 32.8. Estimate the weight of an alligator that's 10 feet long. We had this formula quite a few lessons ago and they expected you to work backwards. So I know I had to walk some of you through it, which was totally fine. But let's see if the process seems more reasonable now that we've had a little practice. If the weight, or finding the weight of an alligator was 10 feet long, so if the length is 10 feet, one thing that we have to recognize is that we were measuring the alligator in inches. So that means there are 12 inches in each foot. That means the alligator is 120 inches long, okay? If I substitute that in on the left-hand side, we have 120 equals 27.1 LNW, there's my L, minus 32.8. So it's kind of hard to tell all the kind of moving parts with this formula when we saw it the first time back in either, oh my goodness, it was like 7.1 or 7.2. It was really early. We want to isolate our logarithmic term. So we have to isolate the LNW. 27.1 is being multiplied, 32.8 is being subtracted. So let's move that 32.8 first. 120 plus 32.8 is 152.8. Equals 27.1 ln W. Next thing you'd want to do is get ln W by itself. Like so. And I'm going to leave that fraction. So we've got 152.8 divided by 27.1 equals ln w. This is logarithmic, so once we isolate our logarithm, the second thing we do is convert to exponential. And remember our base is e, because it's never written as anything else for an ln. We're going to raise that to a pretty unique exponent, 152.8 over 27.1, I know it's kind of hard to get that to fit in there, and what should that equal? Voila, just like that, that should equal the weight of the alligator in pounds. See if you can enter that in on your calculator. E to the 152.8 divided by 27.1, make sure you have parentheses around that, and we should get an approximate weight, and we'll go to the nearest hundredth this time, of 281.01 and the label would be pounds, or LBS. That would be the approximate weight for the alligator. And these are your application and solving problems for both exponential and logarithmic functions.